so as mentioned, I'm Melvin Newman. I, I'm a 15 year estimator myself. I uh, started um, co founded Padavid with a business partner back in 2017 basically to commercialize uh, a bunch of the stuff that I was building for my own job as an estimator. Uh, we released all of that back in 2018 through to 2022. And by 2022, I had to make a life decision on which way I was going to go, if that was going to be you know, staying as an estimator or jumping into Padavid because running two full-time jobs was getting to be a little bit much. Um, so yeah, I uh, left uh, estimating 2022 and went full time at this. Um, so first and foremost, the platform is cloud native, which means that uh, you don't have to install anything. <clears throat> Anywhere that you have a browser, you can connect to the platform. We do recommend Chrome or Microsoft Edge. When you come to the platform, you can click on the register button here and uh, fill up this form. And this will create uh, an initial account for you and kick off a completely free, no credit card, no payment required, two-week trial. Uh, one other thing to note about the platform, it is full multi-user, uh, which means that it's, uh, you can add in other people. But the first person who registers for your company, by default, is the company administrator, and they can add the other people in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And when you first log in, you start at the estimate management screen. In the bottom left here are links to our tutorial videos. These are here to basically give you a hand getting going with the platform. They are very dry videos. But they do have a ton of information in uh, how to use the platform. All of these videos are available on our YouTube channel. You do not need to register to see them. Um, and uh, go take a look at you know how the platform works. On the left hand side here we have our estimate tree. So this can be configured however you want. I personally always like to organize my estimates by year. It just makes things a lot easier when you're coming back and looking for stuff later on. Uh, you can right click on the top folder and create new folders to organize all of this. Again, because it's multi-user, you can create folders and assign permissions to people if you're, if you're a multi-estimator company um, to make sure that you know, everybody only sees what they're supposed to be working on. I'm going to add in a new estimate here. So I'm going to right click on here, new estimate. And I'm going to hit create. And this is going to create a new estimate in my estimate tree here. I can then click on this, and it's going to open up some further details for me. Along the top, we have all of the typical dates that you would have in a, uh, a project. I'm going to select, you know, closing date here uh, and put that information in. It's all optional, uh, depending really on what you want to track. The key one here is labor. So out of the box, there's a couple of labor manuals built in that you have access to. Uh, the first one is the Suderman labor manual. Uh, Suderman is an estimating consulting and training organization. They teach electrical estimating. They also produce a labor manual. And we partnered with them quite a while ago, and we built their labor manual into the platform. We then also have the NECA labor manual in here the North American Electrical Contractors Association uh, labor units built in here also. Um, the difference between the two, Suderman is heavily geared towards uh, residential and commercial construction, and the NECA manual is geared towards larger projects. On the pricing side of things, out of the box, we have our quantified pricing source. It is updated roughly monthly. It is list price only. It is basically good for budgeting. Uh, however, you can bring in you know, other suppliers. The key supplier being City Electric. Uh, so with City Electric, we have a very tight integration with their platform, uh, with their internal platform, that allows you to get your pricing into an estimate with up to the minute accuracy. Um, so <clears throat> really, really fast way of getting all of your fiddly bits and widgets 
priced up in an estimate. I'll show you how that works in a, a minute here. We also have the ability to track, you know, who you're bidding to. Um, and here's sort of like a lightweight uh, CRM platform. You don't have to use it. It's uh, handy if you're bidding on jobs that, you know, where you go out to multiple GCs and you want to track how you're performing with each one of those. I'm going to go ahead and attach some files in here. So when I click on here, it's going to open up a dialog and I can go and grab my files here. And anything PDF can be attached in. So I'm going to grab a couple of PDF documents here, click on open, and that's going to attach these into my estimate. So anything PDF, uh, there's no limits on retention or any of that kind of stuff in here. Um, the only limitation right now is each individual file can't exceed 250 megs, but uh, that's an arbitrary limitation because we had to put one in. Um, <clears throat> so anything PDF you can attach into your estimate to work on. One last thing that I'll show you on this screen is our marketplace. So up here we've got marketplace, and within marketplace we have Suderman estimating systems built right in here. Uh, so you can actually share an estimate with Suderman, and uh, they will produce the, the bid for you. Um, they are a North American company, um, so when you share with them, they are employing only local resources. And uh, you can give John a call and you know get a price on uh, what it would take to do your estimate for you. It is fully collaborative. So you can see exactly what they're doing as they are doing it. Um, and then when it's done, everything comes back to you, the contractor. So you have full traceability on what went, went into your estimate. Um, so that's just a, a small side thing. We don't actually uh, handle any of the billing or anything with them. So you deal directly with Suderman if you want to hire them to help you with your estimating. So going back to our estimates here and opening this up. So once you've got this set up and configured, the next step is to click on the green button here to open up the estimate. And now we are in this bid. On the left hand side here, we have our documents. So this is everything that's been attached into this estimate. And I can click on the arrow here and expand out each document. And this will show me the pages in here. I can then click on those pages, and it's going to open this up for me. And I can navigate around this, very similar to a Bluebeam or Adobe or any of those uh, other estimate uh, tools that you might use. Then we have our estimate items. Now, estimate items are one-off things that you can create specific to this bid. So if I right-click on this, and I create a new item here. We're going to call this crane setup. Uh, if we had to put a crane on this site and we had to manage it, and I needed to make a labor allowance for it. So I could throw, you know, 10 hours at this, a few hundred dollars of miscellaneous materials if I needed them, select the shape I wanted, and give it a color here. And so once I've created this item, it shows up in my estimate items folder. I can double click on it and I can place it on the drawing here. <clears throat> now estimate items are specific to this bid. They will not show up in any other area or any other estimate. So they're very specific to the project you're working on. Typicals are estimate based assemblies. So these can range from anything from lighting and panels all the way up to um, you know whole suites or units if you're working a multi-family type of estimate. So basically they're, you, they're collections of items that you can put in here uh, to accelerate your takeoff. And we'll show you how that works in a minute here, especially when we get to lighting. Then we have our items list here. So this is our global items database. We have over 52,000 items as of yesterday uh, loaded in here. And we are continuously adding to this. Um, so we've got, you know, basically all of the cable, everything that you would ever typically use on a project. 
your conduits, your different lighting styles, plugs, switches, all of that information is loaded in here. If there is anything missing, you can send us a link to the catalog, and we're more than happy to load that in for you. We do not charge to do that. Uh, if we load it in, it goes into our global items database here. You also have access to this. So in the top right, you'll see this database icon here. Within that icon uh, is our database editor. And so you can edit any part of this. When you edit something or create your own content in here, it is locked to your company. Nobody else can see it. Nobody else can access it. Um, so that's kind of how it works in here. You're welcome to engage with us to bring in product, um, or you can customize things however you as the end user would like. Assemblies are the same sort of thing. Assemblies are collections of items for an installation. So if I expand this out, <coughs> um, these bring together everything that you need to do an installation. So a plug is not just a receptacle that you put a cord into in the wall. There's everything behind it. You've got, you know, the faceplate and the receptacle, but then you've got the boxes, the cabling, the staples, all of those pieces. That is what a uh, assembly brings in for you. And again, there's a whole bunch of these that come out of the box. You can use them as a template to create your own assemblies. Um, and you can also uh, do all of your own customization in here. This is really where most of our clients spend their, their time customizing. You know, they'll have us load in all of the items, um, but then they will go and create all of their own assemblies. And then we have breakdowns. So breakdowns are ways of organizing your estimate. They're buckets that you can assign takeoff into. Uh, so I used a template to open up this estimate. Um, and so a bunch of these uh, systems and such came in predefined. So if you don't use a template, all of this is blank and you can create it on the fly. Uh, if you do use one of the templates, you can create as many templates as you want in the platform for different styles of work and different methodologies that you might be involved in. Um, you can have it pre-populate all of this information for you. On the right hand side, we have our quick item pads. Quick item pads are shortcuts into the items and assemblies database. They also form the specification for what you're working on as you're working on it. So if I select commercial distribution here, everything is going to be coming in with MC cable and then EMT with THHN wire for my home runs. If I select, uh, you know, just a, an EMT <coughs> uh, based quick item pad, then everything is going to be coming in hard piped down to the device. And then if I select something in uh, my residential space here, everything's going to be coming in with NMD wire and, you know, my new work boxes and all of that kind of uh, product specific to what I'm working on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab um, my commercial distribution here, <coughs> and I'm going to do some takeoff. So I'm going to zoom in here, and uh, we'll see on here, you know, I'm going to take off some plugs. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on my 15 amp plug here. And then I'm going to select the wire gauge I want to run it in. It's a commercial job. I'm going to run everything in number 12 here. I am going to allow a 10 foot drop on this. Basically meaning that I'm running all of my cabling through the ceiling space. It's not the most efficient way to run, but it kind of gets uh, the idea across here of what we're doing. And then I can drag the square around, and I can start to count off these plugs. And if I wanted to spend my whole day counting plugs, I could absolutely do that. Uh, but that is uh, maybe not the best way to spend time. Uh, so I'm going to click on this uh, 50 amp plug again. And in here, we have this yellow icon, this little robot icon. When we click on that, that switches us into rapid count mode. So in rapid count mode, what I can do here is I can simply highlight this plug here and hit commit. 
and that's going to send it back to our computers, and they're going to take over and start doing the count for you for those. While that is going on, I can switch to anything else here and continue to do the same thing. So I can highlight these strobes, for example, and send those over. And it's all going to queue up in here, and the computers are going to work on them until it finishes one of those counts, and it gives you a green refresh button here. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to highlight the drawing for me with everything that it found. So it found 126 of these plugs for me. Now, it is not 100% perfect. Um, we, we do target 90% uh, accuracy with it, uh, but the goal here is not to replace the estimator. It is to accelerate the estimator. There is no way to train an AI to know how each one of you runs your individual businesses. Um, so what we do here is we really help accelerate the, the menial counting, if you will. Um, so there's a couple of uh, plugs that it missed here. I can simply grab any of the existing ones, copy them, and then paste them in on the ones that were missed. And then I can add that into my estimate. And I have another green refresh button here. And there are my 32 strobes counted for me. So again, not there to replace the estimator or the trade knowledge, uh, but there to accelerate it. Uh, and one of the key reasons for this, again, areas like this where we have, you know, the engineer has used the same symbol to mean multiple different things. Um, what we can do in this case is, again, we can use the AI. So this is going to be my waterproof GFI. So I'm going to select this, <coughs> and then uh, I'm going to select wrap account again. And in this case, I'm going to check off this replace overlapping accounts here. And then I'm going to highlight this tag. And what this is telling the system to do is go take a look through the drawings. Find where it says, you know, waterproof GFI. And if it's overlapping uh, an existing plug, swap it out. So basically, what you can do is start your takeoff at the lowest common denominator and then work your way up. Again, the AI is not there to replace your trade knowledge. It is there to make things go faster. So we can see here that it's found a bunch of these plugs that it's now swapped out. So my, my account of just regular 15 amp plugs has gone down. And I now have a number of these 15 amp GFIs in here. So there's a number of different tools in here to significantly accelerate that takeoff. And everything is coming in here, as I mentioned, as an assembly. So if I maximize this audit trail here, You'll see everything, this is what's called an audit trail. Because the platform is multi-user, everything feeds into an audit trail first so that you can see exactly how the estimate was assembled. Um, everything is tagged so that you know how it was put together line by line. So things go in on separate lines here. That's very normal. It does look messy, um, but <clears throat> you'll see in the summary how it's all brought together. Uh, but you also have these little down arrows here. So when I click on that, that's going to expand this assembly out. So I haven't just ha counted 123 plugs here. It's bringing in everything I need to install these. Uh, the cable, the receptacle, the plates, the all of the bits and pieces that I need to install this plug is brought in through that assembly. And all of these assemblies are formula driven, so you only have to create one of them um, instead of you know one for every size or option. Uh, and then the formulas will calculate it out for you. So that in a nutshell is kind of how the, the counting works. The next step is to set the scale on the drawing. So I can click on this, and then I can select the measure tool, and I'm going to measure off this double door here. And that's going to be 6.5 feet. We do make it mandatory to use a known dimension. And this is because once in my lifetime, I screwed up an estimate very badly when I did not catch that the owner had modified the PDFs and all the scales were off by a half. 
and it was at a plant, and the whole project took place in tunnels, so I had all the perfect count of fittings and half the length of everything. So we, we make it mandatory to use a known dimension uh, because that guarantees that this scale is going to be set to the drawing no matter what. Um, then I can grab my cable here, and I'm going to take this off in uh, 12 with two conductors. I don't need a drop length on it because that's already been covered in each one of my plugs. And then I can simply draw it in. And as I'm drawing it in, it's calculating out the quantity for me based on the scale. And then I can bring this out into the hallway here and add that in. I can put a box on the end of it. And then I can grab both of these by holding down the shift button to highlight them. And then I can copy it as a group and paste this in. And then it's going to copy all of those pieces again. Um, so really rapid ways of doing a takeoff and bringing everything in accurately. If I needed to run my home run here, uh, I'm going to grab my EMT. It's going to have three conductors in it with the ground. I'm going to run this in three-quarter inch here. I just need a single run. And then I can connect up these two boxes. I can then click on that again. And it's going to then be upsized to five conductors because I've picked up this room. And then maybe I want to upsize it to one inch. And in this case, I am going to put that eight-foot drop on here down to my panel. And then I can simply draw this in and connect it into my panel here. And all of this, again, is bringing in all of the pieces that you need to install this. So if I go and I expand out that assembly for that last run we did, uh, it's bringing in my conductors, it's bringing in my EMT, it's bringing in everything that I need to mount that. So all of this, uh, you know, the AI and everything is great if you have the symbols on the drawing. If you're working in residential or something designed to build, uh, and you basically get nothing. Um, for that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on one of our residential drawings here. And this is kind of what you typically get if you're working in custom homes or something design build, where effectively you get nothing but a floor plan. And so what we have in here is our drafting quick item pads. So in our drafting quick item pads, everything switches over to symbols. And what I can do is I can click on any one of these symbols. So I'm going to put some 15 amp plugs in here. I'm only going to run these in number 14. I'm going to put a three foot whip in there because that's going to be my, you know, running through the wall. Depends on your wall construction. If this is CMU, it's going to be different. Um, if this is, you know, two by six wood construction, uh, you might have to tackle things a little differently. <clears throat> but when I bring this over, it's going to place that symbol on the drawing for me. And I can rotate it using the R button and place this in my drawing. And then I can hit commit. And so I've just brought off, you know, a, a collection of five plugs in this room here that I've drafted in. But again, I haven't just drafted this in. It is bringing in everything that I need to do the installation here because it's tied back to my assemblies. So as I'm drafting out my drawing, the system is building the estimate for it behind. Um, so I only have to do one step here, and that is make a nice drawing. And we're not trying to take on AutoCAD or Revit here. We're trying to make really good looking napkin sketches. Um, so I can turn on a grid here and grab some lighting. And in this case, I'm going to take off uh, some four-inch lights here. And I'm going to bring this in, and it's going to snap to my grid. Uh, so again, I can generate a very fast layout, and the system's going to plug in everything for me to account for that layout. Um, so this, in a nutshell, is how the drafting works in here. And you can add in notes and all of that kind of information on here. So if I need to tell the owner these plugs are going to be two feet above the floor, I can throw that in here. 
Um, I can throw site pictures or my own logo on here. Uh, if you are doing this, I strongly recommend including your logo on here so that they know exactly who uh, is doing this work for them. And you can plug that in so that at the end, when you're done all of this, you can export this as a PDF and it's going to bring everything in. So if I click on my documents, I've got this extract pages to PDF here. I can click on that. <clears throat> select my page, give it a name here, and hit save. And it's going to go and it's going to create a new file for me. This file is also going to be attached back to my estimate here. So I can keep multiple versions of this file as I'm interacting with the owner. Uh, and it's all stored and traceable in here. Um, so when I come here and I download this layout, Let's save that. And it's going to look like this. I've got this nice PDF that I can send out to the owner with everything that I'm supplying to them on the project. Um, if I need to revise something, they come back to me and they say they actually want six pot lights in here or more plugs. I can make those revisions and send them the revised drawing. So everything becomes visual now. Uh, a lot of these owners and clients, they're not electricians. They don't necessarily know what it means when they get a quote that says I'm installing 120 plugs for you. Um, but what really resonates is the image. When you show them the layout that says I'm supplying you exactly this. Uh, but that in a nutshell is uh, kind of the drafting and takeoff side of things. Um, one of the last things I will show is back to the commercial sector here, uh, specific to lighting. Um, so if I open up my schedule drawing here, so you know the standard commercial job, you have your schedule of fixtures um, in here. What we can do with this, uh, I'm going to use typicals for this, so circling back to typicals here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a folder in here. And I'm going to call this lighting. And my OCD, I'm going to call it lighting without the capitals. There we go, in the middle. And then I can click on our tool to extract a table from a drawing. And I'm going to highlight this table. And then I'm going to select where I want to put it. So I'm going to put it under lighting here. And then I'm going to select that I want this to be a light fixture uh, table and hit send. And that's going to shoot this back to our servers and they're going to start extracting the information out of this table and building a preliminary set of assemblies for me. Um, so the goal here again is to just get that tag list out to your suppliers as fast as possible. And then I can refresh this. And it's captured the vast majority of the lines. There's a couple that I can go in and add in myself later on. And it has put this now under my lighting here. So this is my lighting tags in here. And I can now go to my lighting drawing and immediately start to take this off. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab my FR1s, for example. I double click on my FR1. I'm going to use rapid count on this. And I'm going to highlight that fixture. And there's a couple of different ways that I could do this. I can either highlight the fixture or the tag. It really depends on how the engineer has uh, built out the drawings. And if they've, you know, done a nice clean set of drawings or if they kind of made things a mess and just kind of jammed everything everywhere. Um, it, it really is project by project. But in this case, I'm going to grab all of these symbols here and send these off to the server to count these. Now each one of these typicals that it's created for me, uh, these are preliminary assemblies. So if I grab you know, my FR1s here and I edit this typical, in here it's got just the tag for me because my goal here is to get this tag list out as fast as possible to my suppliers. But I can come back at any point in here and add in my lighting. So I know that this is a 
two by four fixture. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to add one of these in. So what it's telling the system now is for every one of these typicals, put in one of these two by four fixtures. And then I can save that and it's going to apply that to my estimate. And I can refresh this and there are, there's my counts. Um, it's done uh, remarkably well. Um, there is a couple that are missing here. So that in a nutshell is how this counting goes together uh, and how the takeoff works. Once you're done the takeoff, whether that's drafted or whether that's, you know, ripped off of a set of plans here. Uh, one last thing about the AI, it is able to operate across multiple drawings at once and all of those sort of things to, to just accelerate that takeoff. The next step is to click on summary here. And this brings together everything that has been put into this estimate so far. So this is where pricing is coming in. This is where labor is coming in. And it's going to tell you, you know, how many hours you've taken off, what your material pricing is. Uh, I'm running this right now with just our built-in uh, quantify source. Uh, but anything can be overwritten here. So these yellow columns, um, if there's something that you look at and say, okay, you know, I know that this is going to be, you know, $25 for this. You can punch that in here. And it's going to highlight that row yellow for you so that you know that it has been edited, it has been updated. Um, you can also right click on that and reset the row back to whatever is in the database. This is really where um, that city electric integration starts to kick into high gear. Up at the top, there is the CDS logo here. When you click on that, you can have your city electric account tied in here. And then you can click next. And what it's going to do is it's going to go and talk to City Electric system and it's going to pull in your contractor specific pricing from them on anything that they can provide you in here. Um, so I can uncheck stuff if I, there is something that I'm not interested. So what happens is you do have to send us your account number, your City Electric account number. Uh, because we have to authenticate that with their integration team. And then they turn it on for your account. And then when you come back in here, it's going to ask you to enter that information. It's a one-time thing. As soon as you enter it, your account is then tied in. Now, what has to happen at the branch level is, yes, they have to maintain your contractor-specific pricing. So if you've negotiated anything with them. What's really unique about this integration, though, is it is real time. So if you pull in the pricing from them and you look at this and say, wow, this price doesn't make any sense, you can call your branch manager and say, hey, buddy, go fix this. And the moment they save that within their platform, you can re-pull it in here and it will update in your estimate, um, in your pull. So it is effectively real time collaboration. City Electric. Uh, so again, if you're looking at something in here, you know, you've got uh, 10,000 feet of cable of MC that you're doing on some condo building and you want a better price, call your branch manager, tell him this and say, give me my better price. And the moment he saves that, you can repull it in here. And the other thing is this is running 24-7, 365. So if you're working on estimates, you know, between the hours of 11 and midnight, which is where a lot of estimators, especially if you own your own business, are running. Um, you can pull this pricing in all the time. So it is continuously running. Uh, you are also still in control of it. So it's going to highlight with these blue check boxes what City Electric can price you. You don't necessarily have to accept that. You can uncheck it. And it's not going to bring that in then. Um, and once you've settled on what you want here, you can then just click this import into estimate button and then close this. And that's where it's going to then bring that pricing into your estimate. And it's going to highlight it yellow and say this is coming from City Electric. Now, if there is something that you look at and you're like, okay, I didn't actually want that from them, you can right click on it and reset the row. And it's going to go back to whatever is in your database. So you are in total control of the pricing but it's just tremendously easier to, to deal with 
the city electric integration here and bring in their pricing. Once you've won the job, so let's say that you know you close this six weeks later, you hear back that you have won this project. Uh, you can come back in here, click on that CBS logo again, click next. It's going to go and grab your updated pricing, and then down here you can check and you see you know if there is a variance, if pricing has moved, if it's dramatically moved, you can call up your branch manager again and say, hey buddy, you got to fix this because um, we're going to be buying this now. Um, and then you can go through and you can check off what you want to purchase. So if you don't want to, you know, maybe you don't need the devices uh, right away, you're going to do staged ordering, that sort of stuff. Uh, and you can build out a quick uh, bill of materials here and then click purchase from City Electric. And that converts this over to an order now. You can fill in your PO number here. You can override any of the, the quantities in here. So if you only needed 100 feet you know, up front, you can override that. You can put in the address where you want them to deliver it and click place order. Now we are in the live system, so I'm not actually going to place this order right now. Um, <clears throat> from City Electric side, this shows up at the branch as an EDI order. Um, so it basically goes straight into their system and they can start pulling it for you. If there's any issues with quantity or anything of that nature, uh, they can give you a shout and sort that out. Um, and when you do place that order, it opens up another column here called quantity ordered, and it tracks what you've ordered to date from them. So again, just a, a number of simple ways to track your material buyout on an estimate by estimate basis. And more importantly, Kind of track back that you are only buying the right materials and the right quantities per the estimate. One of the other things on this screen, you'll see these yellow icons here. That means there's a shop drawing associated with this item. You can click on that and that's going to give you the shop drawing in here. Um, so with that shop drawing, you can download it, you can send it over to the owner, you can figure out if this is what you actually want to use. Um, and the last thing that we'll cover on this screen is summarizing it. So you can right click anywhere on this table and you'll find in this platform, right click opens up a lot of different options for you. So uh, a lot of things are driven kind of through these menus. Um, so I'm gonna right click on this table and select summarize. And then it's gonna give me my list of breakdowns. And so if I wanna see what this is by drawing, I can click on this and click summarize. And that is going to go and uh, summarize my estimate now by drawing. And it's gonna tell me what each drawing is worth labor and material wise. And then I can expand that out and I've got my bill of material per drawing. If I wanted to see something a little more fine grained here, I could select drawing and phase, for example, and then hit summarize. And now when I expand out that drawing, it's going to break out for me the phases of construction. So, you know, what's my rough-in worth, what's my finishing, all of that. And then if I expand that out, <coughs> it's going to show me what my bill of materials is for each one of those. And any of these tables, I can directly export to either Excel or PDF. So if I needed to send this out for procurement right away, I can simply dump that out and send it out to my suppliers. So that, in a nutshell, is how the summary screen works here. Uh, so if I clear that and go back to the overall here, um, this is really kind of how the summary screen brings together everything on your project. The next step is to go into closing. So in closing, you select a breakdown here. I'm going to run with drawing because that's always going to be the easiest. It's managed by the system. Hit next, and I've got my labor that we start out at. So you can put your crews in here, and that can be as simple as one average rate, or if you're working on larger projects with you know, multiple phases and multiple work phases, uh, you can create detailed crew breakdowns in here. And then you can assign these crews to your project. Uh, again, this is very important for the contractor side of things totally irrelevant on the supplier side, 
um, so this can be ignored. But when you're the contractor and you're putting together a detailed estimate, you need to be able to break down where the labor is going. And if you have different areas with different crews, you can assign them in here with their different labor factors. So if this is a night crew, for example, they're gonna lose at least 10% productivity. So you can throw that factor in and then it's going to calculate out your revised labor for you here. And then your labor rate, and that's gonna put it together. Uh, then we get into packages. So this again is kind of a gray area between uh, where you know the supplier and the contractor can work together and collaborate together. Um, I used, again, the template to open up this project, so I have a couple of predefined packages in here. Lighting is always a big one. Uh, so when I come in here and edit my lighting package, I've got a few of the companies that, you know, I typically deal with, and I could add in, you know, Rexel here um, <coughs> and, uh, uh, you know, delete somebody if I don't deal with them. But then what I can do here is attach in those tags. So all of those light fixtures that I took off there, I can attach those in here. And again, you wanna do this as early as possible in the life cycle of the project, uh, because your end goal here is to get this tag list out for quoting as fast as possible and lead the narrative on the project. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to throw in a couple of other scope items because I expect these guys to carry delivery. And then I expect them, you know, if there's any spare parts to cover that off in here. And then once I've got that scope set up that I want on this project, I can click download BOM. And this is going to create for me a RFQ template, which I, I can then open up here. And here we go. Uh, so in here, I've got, you know, my project information, the name, the closing date, my contact information, and then I have everything that I'm expecting them to quote me. So this is, if you're just doing, you know, a residential home, you know, a renovation or a retrofit, you're probably not going to be using this. It's overkill. But the moment you get into anything commercial, um, or large multifamily where there is a significant lighting package that you're going to want a quote on, this is how you organize that with the suppliers uh, very quickly, very effectively. And this template can be completely customized on the company. So you can have your own logos in here, you can have your own terms and conditions, so that every time you send out this RFQ, the supplier knows exactly who they're dealing with and what's expected of them. And then this is gonna sit here. I am gonna save this. And this is gonna sit here red, uh, indicating that you don't have a price in here. So again, this is usually something you'll be doing fairly early on in the estimating process. You know, as soon as you've finished your lighting counts, you can get that out. Um, but then you can come back in on that day of closing and you can edit this and you can start to fill in those numbers as they come in. So I'm going to add in a lump sum here because, you know, Mike and every other supplier out there, they never break this out. And so it's always going to be one crazy lump sum number. Um, and uh, as these are rolling in, I can throw in the numbers here. And, you know, I've got my numbers in for each one of my suppliers, but then I can check the, the bill of materials that they're going to be quoting me. So the key here is to make sure that everything is covered. So if, you know, Rexel took exception to the delivery here, you could throw in a $500 allowance on that. And then you can look at the bottom here and pick who you want to carry. So I'm going to check off here who I want to carry in my estimate, and then I can hit save. And that's when it gets plugged into your estimate here. So you've got, you know, $5,000 is coming from City Electric. You know exactly what you carry. <clears throat> and this is saved in your estimate for all time. Um, so the key here again is, you know, you've closed this job six to eight weeks later, you hear you've won it, you've closed 10 other jobs in the meantime. You can very quickly come back in here and check this and say, okay, yes, I got three quotes. City Electric was the lowest one that covered everything. I carried them. Awesome. 
I need to go cut that PO and just get this out the door. Uh, so all of that knowledge is retained in the estimate. Um, yeah, and if there's anything in here that, uh, if you have uh, some supplier that is, you know, unique to your location, feel free to reach out to us. We'll work with them to bring in that pricing uh, basically the same way. We're loading in. Um, so uh, coming back in here, we've covered packages, subcontracts, works exactly the same way. Uh, equipment, this is kind of the rental equipment that you can plug in on a project. So if you've got generators, you can plug those in here. Um, so if you had, you know, 24 hours of a generator, it's only going to run, you know, a quarter of the time. It can calculate out for you the amount of fuel that you need on there. And then you can simply plug in your fuel surcharge. Then we have overheads and indirects. Not going to go into any detail on that right now because every single company has 10 different ways of defining that and what those are. So there are tables where you can uh, kind of plug in that information for your overheads, your project managers, all of that kind of detail. And then at the end, we get the final sale price. So you can put job expense factors in, profit factors, whatever you want in here. Uh, you can run with one overall markup. Um, and then you can fine tune anything in here if you want. So if your labor is going to be 25%, your materials are going to be kind of that 15%, you can fine tune all of that detail. It's going to calculate out the, the profit and all that for you. And then down at the bottom here, it's going to give you the breakdown. So in this breakdown, it's going to, you know, I selected by drawing. It's telling me what each drawing is worth all in. This breakdown can be exported to Excel and then attached into your quote document that you send out to the end client. And that is where this platform ends. Um, so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.